Everybody wake up! Google has just dropped a new gem, Firebase Studio. Everyone's been hyping it up like it's the future of app development. But is it actually that good? Today, I'll be using Firebase Studio for the very first time and diving in head first to find out. No fluff and no filters. Let's see how far we can push this thing. Alright, so let's just go ahead and search for Firebase Studio. Let's click on this link to see what Firebase Studio is all about and let's try Firebase Studio. Hmm, interesting. Let's accept the terms and conditions and let's create an account with our Google account right here. Alright, so it seems like we are actually able to prototype an app just by giving an AI prompt over here. And over here, it seems like we can also start coding an app by creating a new workspace with all of these frameworks over here. So you have stuff like Python, Flask, you have Flutter. You also have React Native plus Expo, which is also a very commonly used framework to develop mobile apps as well. So let's think of the app that we want to actually try to build. Let's actually try using one of these preset templates first. Let's do an ERP dashboard for small businesses showing revenue, expenses, profit, plus a calendar for appointments. So let's click on prototype that with AI. Quite excited to see what this spins up. Okay, looks like it's loading. And Gemini is now building our app. So it looks like it built an app blueprint right here. You can see all of the features that it's going to implement, as well as the styling for our app. So we have a color palette, a layout, some iconography, and as well as some animations for our app as well. So let's go ahead and prototype this app. You can see that it also actually gave our app a name called Biz Balance. So that's pretty cool. It's actually generating all of the code in real time. And I would say, and I have to say the generation is pretty fast actually compared to other models. So yeah, there's definitely a plus point right there. You can see that it's changing a lot of files and generating a lot more files for us as well. Oh wow, and it looks like it is actually already done generating in less than one minute. So yeah, this Firebase Studio is actually extremely fast when creating new projects. You see over here, there's also prompting us to enter our Gemini API key so that we can use some AI functionalities in our app. Since I don't have one with this account just yet, let me just auto generate and let's see what happens. So it's generating a Gemini API key for us. Let's see if we need to do any additional steps or is just able to generate it just like that. And it looks like we also have this window over here which allows us to test our app. Let's see, we can also test it in a new window itself. We can also select stuff on it to see what we want to change as well so that we can prompt our model. Alright, so it looks like actually it just auto generated an API key for us. And now we can go ahead and test our app. So I have it open in another window. You can see that we have some total revenue, total expenses, some profit, which is dummy data. Let's see what happens if we try to input some revenue. You see that it has a working date selector over here. Let's just choose today's date. We can set, set the amount as well say 10,000. We can also add a description. Let's see what happens when we add revenue. Seems like there's a pop-up. But unfortunately, it seems like the total revenue over here, as well as the profit, was not updated when we tried to add the revenue over here. The appointment calendar also seems like it's not really working. So let's go ahead and try to prompt the model to fix those mistakes. See that I think I can also select this and you can see and I'm also able to change this element but maybe I don't want to do that just yet. So maybe let's prompt the AI model. When adding revenue, the total revenue and profit is not being changed. 
So let's see how Firebase Studio actually makes changes to our application. Because I think previously the total revenue expenses as well as profits over here were being hard coded inside. And yes, looks like it made some changes for us. Let's try putting an amount, 10,000. When we add revenue this time, you can see that the total revenue as well as profit changes. We scroll down over here, we can also try to add some expense. 5,000. We can also choose a category. When we add expense, you can see that the total expenses have also been updated as well as the profit as well. Now let's take a look at the appointment calendar. Seems like the appointment calendar is also not working. So let me try clicking on this tool to select our card content over here, the uh, calendar. And maybe let's prompt the AI model to add the functionality to this calendar to view appointments. Let's see what happens. It's changing a lot of the code and hopefully it adds some functionality to the calendar. So it's reloaded now. It seems like there have been some issues. Yep, there's an issue over here. Let's just fix the error. So I think that's also pretty cool. It automatically detects errors with our project and you can prompt the model to fix it. Okay, it looks like there's still some issues. All right, and once it's been reloaded, let's try clicking on this thing. It looks like the appointment calendar is still not working, but we have some dummy data over here. So maybe let's prompt the model again. Add a way for users to log appointments in the calendar and show those appointments. Looks like there was an internal error trying to process our request. Let's just try again and see what happens. So as you can see, Firebase Studio is definitely not foolproof and you'll definitely run into numerous errors when trying to create something, a project from scratch. Okay, it looks like everything has been updated. I don't know why the total revenue, expenses and profit went back to its original values. But for our appointment calendar, you can see now when we click on a date, we are able to add and create a new appointment for that date. So let me just try it out. When I create an appointment, you can see that it's reflected over here. I try to create one here now. You can see that it's also reflected in this list over here. And let me also just go ahead and try to change the styling of this list view over here. So we click on this, we select this. So we click on this and we try to select the list view over here, the card content. Change the style of the appointments list view. Let's see what happens. Another error occurred, let's just try again. Alright, and now it's formatted much better. And all of the functionality still works. Alright, very cool. So I think for a first app, that is pretty neat. Firebase Studio was able to code this up relatively quickly 
with just a few prompts that I've made. And now for the second part of this video, let's try making a more complicated app using our own prompt. Now for this app idea, I'm thinking of creating a receipt logger app where users will be able to upload their receipts into the app and using AI, it will automatically extract the data from the receipt and track your expenses. So let's go ahead and write that as a prompt. So an app that tracks users' expenses whenever they upload an image of their receipts. Let's prototype this with AI. So I'm really excited to see if Firebase Studio is truly able to create this app for us just from a single prompt. You can see that it's generated the prototype for our app called Receipt Tracker. We are also able to edit any parts of this that we want. Let me just close out of that for now. Let's read some of the features. So obviously we want the feature where the user will be able to upload their receipt. We also want data extraction where AI, we also want data extraction which uses AI capabilities to extract the relevant information about our receipt and spendings. We also want to display the data as well as track our expenses and maybe a category suggestion. So let's prototype this app right now. Okay, it looks like it's generating our app for us. So let's see if Firebase Studio is able to generate our app properly. Hopefully it's able to do so. And if it does, that'd be great. It looks like for this project, it's taking a bit more time compared to the previous one. Oh, and actually it's just done right now. So it's asking for a Gemini API key again. So let's auto generate that. And you can see that we have our application over here. So I went to the internet and gotten a picture of a receipt and let's try uploading it here. So if we choose file, you can see that we uploaded our receipt and it shows the receipt over here, the image over here. Let's try extracting the data now. Hmm, seems like we are getting an error. Let's try fixing that using Gemini AI. So the issue, when we click on the issue, you can see the error over here and you can see this pop up that Gemini has detected an error. So let's try fixing the error. All right, so the changes have been made. Let's try uploading that file again and extracting the data. Seems like we're still running into the same error. So let's just try changing that again. Let's try it one more time. All right, so we are still running into some errors, but at least it's a different error. So let's try fixing the error again. All right, so yeah, it very quickly updated and edited our files. Let's try one more time. Fingers crossed it works this time. Unfortunately, it did not. So there was a fetch fail. Let's try fixing the error. So as you can see, definitely it is not able to get it right on the very first try, but hopefully by continuously prompting the AI model, we'll be able to fix the error and come up with a working MVP at the, by the end of the day. Let's try extracting the data again. Seems like we're getting error after error after error now. All right, so unfortunately I had to roll back to the initial version because the previous because for some reason it was taking very long to load. Let's just try uploading the receipt again. 
you can see that we're getting the same error that we previously had. We try to fix the error. Let's try refreshing the page and we can see that the error was the files have been changed. Let's try extracting the data now. And we're also getting this error. So let's fix this error. Now let's try choosing the file again and extract the data. Seems like we're still getting the same error. Maybe we could just copy this error and we'll prompt Gemini AI like this. So unfortunately, we got a different error now. Hopefully, now Gemini AI is able to fix all of the errors and we'll have a working MVP. So it seems like we're still getting the same error. Let me just copy this and paste it here. Let's try it one more time. Oh, and it seems like it finally worked. So let's see if it actually extracted the data from our receipt. So you can see that our date is the 2018-0504. In our receipt is 0504-2018. So actually the date is correct. Very nice. For our total amount is 572.16 and 572.16. So great, that's also correct. And the merchant name is your shop name, which corresponds to the merchant name on the receipt over here. That's amazing. So we actually managed to get it to work and extract our data from our receipt over here. So yes, it was able to integrate AI capabilities to actually look at this image that we uploaded and extract data to be passed to the users in the front end. So I think that's amazing. However, we did spend quite a bit of time trying to debug all the errors and it seems like the fix error button or the fix error functionality integrated into this chat over here doesn't really work. So we still have to copy and paste the errors and prompt it in the chat over here. With that being said, let me go into my final thoughts on Firebase Studio as a beginner trying it out for the very first time. First, the pros. It's full stack, so you're not just stuck on front end stuff, and you can actually build up complete applications from start to finish with the complete functionality of an MVP. Plus, the live previews inside the ID itself makes it easy to see changes instantly without constantly refreshing. That being said, it's definitely still far from perfect. Errors still happen pretty often, so you can't just rely on it blindly. And even though it speeds things up, you still need to understand the fundamentals of programming and coding. Otherwise, fixing bugs or trying to tweak stuff can be very, very frustrating. All in all, it's a very powerful tool, but you have to know what you're doing to really get the most out of it. If you're interested in Firebase Studio, check out this video over here where I create an application in under 10 minutes.